Hey guys, this is DMARIA from DroidDog.com and today I will be showing you how to install Android on your HP V or 4G. The first thing you must understand is that this is a dangerous procedure. You may break your phone and you will void your warranty, so do this at your own risk. Read first, watch the video carefully, and make sure you know how to do all of this because if you don't, there's a much higher risk of you breaking it. But otherwise, have fun because this is a great opportunity. First of all, you have to install Novacom drivers. These are the drivers that communicate with your phone. I have provided a link inside the article to the Novacom drivers for both Windows 32-bit and 64-bit. As you can see, I already downloaded them and unzipped the installer. So let's go ahead and install the Novacom drivers. When Novacom installs itself, it disappears. So you're going to find it in C Program Files, Palm Inc. Here it is. This directory is very important for this procedure, so I would suggest keeping it open. So the next thing you do is download the three files required for Android on Veer. These are provided on the site that I will also link you to, and they are Android, rootfs.tar, bootimage.tar, and uimage.install. I already downloaded them as you can see here. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's very important to check the MD5 sum of all these files. If your file is corrupted, it could break your veer. So they provide MD5 checksums on the site, and you can use any MD5 checker app. For example, I have one just called MD5.exe. You paste in the checksum that you copied from the website, and you select a file, and it'll give you the proper uh, MD5 checksum tell you if it matched or not. This is very important and you should check all three files. If not, you could probably break your veer. And what you do is copy uimage.install to your palm folder, which is C program files palm inc on both 32 bit and 64 bit operating systems. So now that that's done, the next thing you do is connect your veer through USB. All you have to do is plug it in. And for you, a prompt will come up asking USB or just charge. Mine doesn't because it's modified, but yours will. I can still do the same thing, though. So now that it's mounted, you open it up and throw Android rootfs.tar and boot.tar onto the root of your SD card. Make sure it doesn't go into a folder, but it's actually on the root of the SD card. This is very important. Now that that's done, you can disconnect your phone and wait for it to stop showing this screen. Now that it's done, all you have to do is hold the power button and shut it down. So now that the veer is off, you have to hold volume up and start it up. Once you see the screen turn on, you could let go of the power button and keep holding volume up. This is called recovery mode and it will show a giant USB icon. Now you plug your phone back in and just let it sit. As you can see my computer is installing drivers and it's done. The next thing you do is open up command prompt by typing CMD in your search bar if you're running Windows Vista or Windows 7. You navigate to your palm folder CD C program files palm comma ink. It's very strange that they put a comma into the name, but what can you do? Next, and this is the most important step, you type in a command. It's novacom boot mem colon slash slash space less than space uimage dot install. And now your viewer should be doing things.
There you go. And this is the final step to installing Android on your HP Veer. Um, don't unplug your phone and be very careful since it's magnetized. Don't pull at it while it's doing this. It might be very, very bad. So now you just wait. Now you just wait for Android to finish installing. But this pretty much means that you're done with the whole procedure and Android is successfully installed on your HP Veer. So now the HP Veer is booting. And the first thing you see is this menu. It says boot webOS, boot Android, boot webOS recovery, reboot or shut down. Now you use the volume keys to go up and down and the power key to select. I want to boot into Android obviously so press down and select it. Now it just boots into Android. And bam, Android is installed. There you go, and it works pretty well, considering that almost nothing works besides the touchscreen and the keyboard. So now that we've installed Android on the Veer, we can look through it. You'll recognize the familiar gingerbread lock screen. This is gingerbread 2.3.7. Um, all the gestures work. This is back. This is home. Hold this for recent apps. And swipe the other way's menu. So if you go into settings, you check about phone. Uh, you see 2.3.7 and this is actually pretty glitchy um, if you look in status battery level 0% battery status unknown network unknown everything doesn't work the only thing set to be working is Wi-Fi so let's quickly try that out okay it turns on that's a good sign. So let me quickly type in my password. There you go. And wow, Wi-Fi actually works. This is great. Also, as you can tell, the hardware keyboard works. If you go into something like messaging, you can tell I was already typing. One feature completely missing from WebOS that's in here is double tap spacebar to end a sentence with a period. And I've been really missing that. I'm glad it's in here. Of course, you can't really text because you don't have signal, but you get the point. There's also the software keyboard. It doesn't work in the messaging app because the screen is too small and the two part covers up the actual message, but uh, it's here and it works in search and it doesn't work too bad just try not to hit the gesture area or else you'll go home oh let's go to hello kitty so the browser is fully working as you can tell um, it's not very smooth at all but uh, you, you can't really expect too much it's a very early port they still have a lot of work to do let's go to droiddog.com um, if you didn't know, the Veer uses the exact same specifications as the T-Mobile G2. The same 800 megahertz um, Snapdragon S2 processor, the same GPU, same amount of RAM, 512 megabytes. It's actually pretty impressive how much this Veer can do. So as you can tell, stuff actually works. It's not very laggy either. If you let it load for a while, it gets pretty smooth. And um, since this is gingerbread, there's no rotation animation. And, well, apparently the accelerometer's not working. My bad. Yeah, accelerometer doesn't work. That's a shame. Oh, well. Well, you get the point. This is actually a pretty cool experience. Gingerbread running on such a small phone. It's pretty great. I hope they can get a lot more working soon, because I would act absolutely love to run Android and actually do things on this phone with Android running instead of just having it as a little toy. Of course you can boot back into WebOS whenever you want which is great. I'll actually have a usable phone because as you can see this doesn't do anything. At least you could browse the internet whenever you want. Oh, it doesn't even recognize the internal SD card. I'm sorry. 
Well, you get the point. This is actually pretty cool. And um, I would suggest you doing this. It's quite simple. Doesn't seem to have any glitches in the install process. And it's quite fun because you can still boot into WebOS and keep using your phone like it always has been. You need at least a gigabyte of space on your Veer. But that's not too hard to free up. So, yeah, go out and do this. Just be very careful. And this has been Demo with DroidDog.com. I will be using this for a few days and maybe post my other thoughts after a few days because this is actually pretty cool. So, thanks for watching. Uh, see you later.